Hello, my name is Pauline Banza, and today we're going to be talking about sports arbitration and agency, specifically looking at football. Uh, many times people wonder if sports agents affect the transfer prices, or if a sports agent should be a lawyer, or if a sports agent should have studied something like agency or management, and people wonder what sports agents do and how, it's, how their work is related to the legal perspective of a sports person, in this case, a footballer. And aside from that, people wonder what happens if a conflict arises between the sports clubs, the clubs they're representing, and the persons they're representing, or the sports clubs themselves, or the sports clubs with the leagues they're in, or the persons with the leagues. So today we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking about whether sports agents affect the pricing of transfers or transfer uh, prices and what the legal perspective of agency is and we shall also be looking at arbitration or conflict resolution in football to start with an agent is basically someone that is going to represent a sports person in this case a footballer or a football club or a football league so um, and a, an agent basically does representation of those persons or entities and what their work is what their work is is to basically represent them in um, negotiating contracts in doing transfers from one um, from one club to another in negotiating um, arguments between clubs and clubs clubs and um, footballers mm -hmm. and also in some time in, in, in certain instances it's between two leagues so the question would arise that is it important for an agent to be a, a, a sports lawyer or is it important for an agent to be basically have to be a person who has knowledge about sports agency or management or have that skill firstly is that to be an agent you do not need anything that's the plain answer as it is you don't need anything to be a sports agent you just need to be just that and under the UK laws, which is basically something that most common law countries use or subscribe to, is that you need to be registered and you should be able to do your next work or representation of a sports person or entity within 10 days. So if you register today, you should be able to transact a contract between a sports person or a footballer with a club within the next 10 days. So basically, an agent doesn't have to have knowledge about anything. It can be a businessman, it can be a doctor, it can be a lawyer. But then it's very important that a footballer's agent is a lawyer. The reason why a footballer's agent should be a lawyer is because when negotiating a contract, there is necessity attached to the terms. I'm very, I'm very sorry for using that word. There is importance that is attached to the terms of the of the contract that is being negotiated and is very important for a, an agent or an intermediary as they're currently being called by FIFA to be a lawyer because those terms need to be understood and negotiated in the best interest of a sports person. And aside from that, it helps the sports person or the footballer or the league or the club to avoid extra costs of having to hire a lawyer to represent them in, in negotiating the contract or revisiting the contract. And most importantly, when conflicts arise or are likely to arise or when they need advice about certain contracts or negotiations that are going through. So it's important that an agent or an intermediary, an intermediary becomes or is a lawyer. So it's very important for that to happen. And like I already said, the question most people always put across is that do these agents actually affect transfer prices? And the answer to this is yes. Now, when you already have a sports lawyer as your, your intermediary, intermediary, you've already solved three quarters of the footballers' uh, problems in terms of negotiating contracts and their best interests, in terms of representing them and everything. Something that I forgot to mention is that intermediaries don't only um, represent sports persons during transfers. They represent them during brand negotiations. They represent them in so many things. And some sports agents or some intermediaries go ahead to be more like personal assistants to the 
persons they're representing so they may even ask them to book flights and it even do, have to do all that other work that is not um attached to the career of the footballer but in instances where it's a lawyer who's an intermediary, there could be an argument between the person, the, the footballer and the intermediary that they shouldn't have um, they shouldn't have such work under his scope of work, which is quite understandable. So yes, sports um, agents literally determine or affect the transfer fees of footballers. In, between different clubs, between different leagues. And this happens because most of the times, 90% of the times, they are negotiating contracts in the best interest of their players. This is the thing. As a player's batting career goes up and keeps on, and the person starts becoming famous, the talent is actually becoming better and the demand is getting high, they don't expect themselves to stay at a certain period and neither does the agent expect themselves to stay at that period. But like I already mentioned, it's important for an agent to be a lawyer because they're going to negotiate in the best interest of the person, even if it's already a, a, a requirement of a normal agent who is not a lawyer. So yes, they already have that mandate because as an agent, you should be able to negotiate in the best interest of your clients. So what happens is that, because I already explained, no, uh, no footballer expects to stay on the same period unless otherwise, unless the talent has totally deteriorated, and which is not likely to happen. So that itself is going to determine the negotiation of, uh, between the person and the club and wherever they're moving to or the brand that they're going to represent. So the first thing is, yes, they do affect it. And the reason is most of the times they're negotiating in the best interests of their clients and the clients do not want their prices to go down. Secondly is that how they affect it is that, for example, if a player is moving from Premier League to La Liga or from Premier League to Bundesliga, the prices are definitely going to be different. What happens is that if an agent is not involved in such transfers, the prices are going to be very high. And the reason is because this league, for example, Premier League, between Premier League and La Liga, La Liga is going to put an English premium on any transaction that is going to happen. So that kind of transaction cannot happen without an agency at an accommodative price. And when an agent comes into play, it actually becomes easier to negotiate that kind of thing because if they actually negotiate directly, it's going to um, attract um, an addition or the transfer that is happening at that point is going to be excessively bigger or out of place. So yes, sports agents or football agents, in this case that we're talking about, do affect prices of um, transfers. And also why they act, uh, um, affect that is that sometimes these agents like a Pogba's agents, like um, Benzema's um, agents or Lewandowski's agents, these agents are handling um, big talent of people who are already established so even if the the persons themselves do not necessarily need a very high increase in their pay the agents don't find it fit for them to move to certain clubs at a bare minimum of what they expect those clubs to pay them or what they expect from those clubs so simply it's very important for a footballer who is looking for an intermediary to consider the fact that that intermediary should be a sports lawyer because firstly it cuts costs for the person secondly the person gets the best representation because the contracts negotiated are in the best interest and there is no need to query about certain terms of the contract and most importantly in case anything happens in terms of conflict in terms of anything that needs resolution the lawyer or the intermediary who is a lawyer is able to step in and able to solve the question or the problem in place. And that actually brings us to the next question, which people always wonder, how do these um, conflicts or um, disruptions, how are they solved in football? For example, over the weekend, there was something that was rumored that Henderson said some words to... Um, Gabriel, the defender for Arsenal, and the 
whole idea is that the, he mentioned racist words to him and that PL, which is Premier League in this case, is investigating that case. There are lots of uh, ideas about that and lots of perspectives attached to that. One of them being that Henderson does charity, so why should he be expected to do such a thing? So people wonder how such things are actually solved or if Henderson or any of the players that or Gabriel have an issue with their clubs they're playing for, how do they solve these issues? Firstly is that a contract is the beginning point of such conflicts. Yes. So if the contract between the player and the club does not explicitly or implicitly, most importantly, ex explicitly, by explicit, I mean it should be in writing, that any conflict that arises between the club and the footballer should be solved by arbitration, then if it's not in that form, you'll have to go to court. But most times, these contracts actually have such terms. So that means... When a conflict arises between players and their clubs, they can be able to solve them by arbitration. By arbitration, when you, you say you're going to solve the problem using arbitration, that means you'll not be going to court. So um, in the past transfer window, there was a lot of um, rumors about, some, for example, Lewandowski was not going to be very affordable because his contract is not yet ended. If he's going to actually go off, it's going to be very expensive. Take an instance that in that case, he actually wants to leave and it does go ahead and negotiates a contract with another club. So if he wants to, he goes ahead, renegotiates a contract with another club before the time within which he can actually negotiate a contract with another club. That would be a conflict between him and the club. And if his contract to the club stated that they could actually solve any conflict through arbitration and they go ahead to have arbitration they will waive their rights to go to court they'll only be able to go to court if Lewandowski is not satisfied with the outcome or the judgments of the arbitration or the conclusion of the arbitration or if the club itself is not satisfied and court can only take on that if it is an appeal so an appeal is basically you feel like you're not satisfied you need redress of that issue and there are instances or there are, um, there are specific reasons within the law in, um, provided for someone to move from arbitration to court in terms of appeal. So that is why I said earlier on, it's very important for a sports player, I mean a sports person or a footballer to have an agent who is a lawyer. Because in this instance, like I've given you, that football agent who negotiated the contract between the two parties will be able to represent the player or the club at an arbitration. Yeah, so it's very important for that to be taken into consideration. But also, like I already started, I gave an instance between Henderson and Gabriel, and that happened on pitch. So what happens in such an instance when the Premier League does investigation? Such decisions and conclusions from such conflicts or arbitration are binding to the parties that are involved in the issues. And that's because the conclusion or the problem solving was done according to the regulations they all subscribe to or they accepted or signed to. And also, it's very important to understand that only sports conflicts or conflicts that arise within the sports can be solved by arbitration so in this instance if for example a player yes for example if Messi gets an issue with Pepsi which he endorses with he cannot seek to solve that problem with arbitration the reason is an arbitration the reason is the arbitration that is supposed to happen in this instance, is this instance should be arising from sports. So the FA cannot listen to his issues. In this case, FA Football Association cannot listen to his issues between Pepsi and him because that is not their scope of work. Rather, what Messi can do in this instance is for him to go to court to have ridges of his issue or have a solution for his issue so it's very important for people to note that it's 
Firstly, like I already mentioned, it's important to have a sports per, uh, sports lawyer as an agent because you get to have um, a lot of advantages that come with him being a lawyer or her being a lawyer. And then secondly is that, yes, conflicts do arise in football. They don't need to, or um, they don't need to only appear in other fraternities, but they also appear in football. And when they're there, they can actually be solved. The first instance I already told you is by arbitration. The second one is by court. And this is specifically if the contract does not, or the argument does not specify that the problem should be solved by arbitration. Do you understand? So before someone goes to the arbitration for arbitration, their contract should be listing out that they should be able to solve the problem by arbitration. But if it does not actually state that the person can go to court or the club can go to court or the league can go to court. And when they go to court, the court will simply um, utilize the sports laws that are in place. But something that I need to mention that is also very important is that sports law is not a specific code of laws. No. Sports law is an applicability of different laws. Yes, so if there is a problem that arises from um, image rights, for example, if, um, if I was a footballer and my photo is used to endorse a brand that I do not sign to, I do not even like, and I do not even, anything like that, there can be, um, there can be the issue can be taken to court. And the issue that I'll be claiming there is that um, there is copyright infringement. Those are my image rights. And also go on to prove that there, there was, I have, um, I have a reputation and there was unfair use. Do you understand? So it's very important to know these kinds of things. But such an issue, like I've already mentioned, if I was a footballer and my photo was taken by Premier League cameras and uploaded for their use, I cannot say that that is a conflict. And even if it's a conflict and I have a contract that says that we should solve it by arbitration, I cannot take it to court. But in the same instance, I cannot even seek arbitration because they have not poorly used my photo. So like I already said, that arbitration does solve issues. And that's the first step every footballer wants to do. That's the first step every league wants to do. That's the first step every club wants to do. Because no one wants to spoil the creative time in court trying to solve an issue that can be solved in a round table. So it's very important that people take it up like as a first step and also like I already mentioned to have sports lawyers as representatives because they're able to represent you um, efficiently and sufficiently because they, knows, they know the pros and cons of the industry. So that being said, I hope... Um, I hope the idea of the topic has been preached well. And that's basically about if sports agents affect transfer fees and about conflict, conflict resolution to include arbitration as a problem solver. My name is Pauline Benza and I'm a legal graduate intern at Olisa Bakoba Legal. Thank you very much.